The range of most EVs comes nowhere near an equivalent internal combustion engine vehicle in the real world. Despite the claims of most manufacturers, the actual range achievable by an EV is always far less than expected, because almost everything you do will reduce it. Turn on the aircon or the seat heaters and your range drops. Battle a headwind and your range drops. Drive uphill and your range drops. Have to tow something and your range drops. Too hot and your range drops. Too cold and your range drops. And now, finally, all of this anecdotal evidence that has been piling up is confirmed by a test by Watt Car that compared the claimed ranges of a number of EVs with real-world situations. And as we shall see in this video, the actual ranges are as much as 38% less than claimed. Add it to the list of reasons why you should never, ever buy an EV. Welcome back to MGuy, British engineer and lawyer turned Sydney YouTuber. Please be sure to like, share and subscribe, hit the notification bell, drop a comment down below and don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter X. The standard EV range test, the worldwide harmonized light vehicle test procedure, sounds like it had been designed just to get the absolute theoretical maximum out of a car in perfect temperatures on a level road. So it's little wonder that these ranges are essentially wishful thinking, as the article explains. Electric car ranges fall by a third in real world conditions. What car magazine found that manufacturers lab tests routinely overestimate the battery life of their vehicles. Tests to find out the range of electric cars are flawed and give a misleading indication of battery life, motorists have been warned. Steve Huntingford, the editor of What Car magazine, said official laboratory tests have inadequacies and need overhauling so that drivers have realistic information and won't be left disappointed after buying an electric vehicle, EV. In real-world winter conditions, EV ranges have been found to fall by more than a third compared with official test results. Car manufacturers are legally required to lab test the range of new electric cars under the Worldwide Harmonized Light Vehicle Test Procedure, WLTP. It measures battery life traveling at an average speed of 28.8 miles per hour in 23 degrees Celsius summer temperatures from 100% charge to zero. When they test the cars, it's quite warm, which is good for the battery, Huntingford said. At the same time, it's also quite a weak test that doesn't ask much of the car. They don't drive at a particularly high speed and they accelerate very slowly. It's the kind of acceleration that would get you in trouble if you drove that way on the road. Huntingford and his team now regularly test the most popular EVs in a real-world driving environment both during summer and winter. They have found there is, on average, an 18% difference in battery life between summer and winter, with charge draining faster in colder temperatures. What it highlights is the inadequacies of the official test, Huntingford said. Manufacturers are not conning people. They have no choice but to use those figures. It just shows how poor the test is and how unreflected it is of real world conditions. So I'll just leave this graphic on the screen for a little while. You can pause the video if you like and have a closer look. But you can see at the top of the list, the Lexus UX 300E Takumi has an official range of 273 miles and its test range was over 100 miles less, 170 miles and a shortfall of 37.9%. And it decreases obviously down to the uh, Mercedes EQE which has a, a shortfall of 21%. But these are huge numbers and, and the ranges aren't that great anyway compared to internal combustion engine cars. Well, this will come as absolutely no surprise to anyone who isn't an ardent evangelist. The effect of cold, hills, wind, AC and heating on most ICE cars, while not zero, is so small as to be effectively ignored. I mean, who has ever got into their regular car and had to consider what direction the bloody wind was blowing? Whereas this is a genuine concern for EVs. Likewise with hills. Nobody in a normal car looks ahead at their route and thinks, oh, I'd better make sure I have some extra petrol for that big hill I have to drive up. But again, this is a genuine problem for EVs, which are incredibly sensitive to external factors. So not only are they slow to charge, but they have terrible range compared to regular cars in the real world. Just another nail in the coffin for EVs as the replacement for regular cars.